So, whoops, I nearly spilled coffee all over my cameras then. If you've been around my videos for a while, you know I often shoot with my X-T1, nearly always with the ordinary standard 18 to 55 lens. Now I think calling an ordinary and standard and kit is probably an understatement because I think it's a brilliant little lens. Now unfortunately, in February this year, I put my camera on a tripod on a bus in Iceland, turned around to talk to somebody, the bus moved away, this went bang, lens first, down onto the ground. And it smashed my little 18 to 55, which I love. It's so small and compact and lovely. The only lens I could find in Iceland to replace it, because I had to replace it quickly, was this one. Now, this is the f2.8 weatherproof 16 to 55. Um, super duper, amazingly wonderful. Fuji lens and it is a very good lens but there's things about it I don't really like and I am going to be getting rid of it I'm going to sell it or exchange it for something or chuck it on eBay I don't know and a few people have said I'm completely mad why would you want to get rid of a one and a half thousand pound lens in favor of a 250 pound lens well this kind of fits in with my ethos that it's not the kit and it's whether or not you like it and whether or not it delivers the goods so first off the aperture that is a 2.8 throughout the range lens, whereas this one isn't. I think it starts at 2.8 when you're zoomed in short wide angle and then it kind of changes as you go out. <clears throat> but do I need f2.8 for the sort of shots that I like to take? No, I don't really. Um, I don't necessarily need it. So that's one thing I don't really need. The other thing is, look at the size difference. This is a big, chunky old lens. Well, <clears throat> that's not too much of a problem apart from the fact what I do like with this is I can just chuck that in my pocket with the lens on and the lens hood and it's there in my pocket. I don't have to carry a bag. I can just whip the camera out and shoot stuff. But the biggest thing I have with this is having developed some of the images and looked at them in Lightroom, I think they're too sharp. Now I know that sounds possibly bonkers because most photographers spend their lives panicking about is their image sharp enough? Well, I think these days a lot of lenses are becoming too sharp. They're unnaturally sharp and I don't like it. It's like those big super duper OLED LED, whatever it's called, high def TVs. I don't like looking at them because the world isn't that sharp. I find they hurt my eyes. My buddy Simon Taplin, who works at a very, very high level around the world, he was telling me that he and a lot of other photographers and filmmakers are looking back and buying old lenses from the past simply because they don't have this super sharp thing. Modern lenses are too sharp. So that is my theory as to why I'm not so keen on the pictures out of this lens. But I thought, let's go and put it to the test. Let's go take a few shots with each and then compare them on the computer. So. I'm going to go see what I can find. I reckon this would work. What I like is the colours. We've got strong light. We've also got little shadows going on on the edges of these posts. And that's going to give us some good details to kind of compare when we get to camera. So I'm going to shoot one at the wide end and then one at the long end. We use the same camera settings and then we can compare them when we get back to base. Camera's on a tripod. You don't need to watch me do that. So that whole coming through the beach huts thing was all choreographed. Let's have a look. I'll see if I can show you my shot quickly and what I'm going to do. So let's roll a bit of video on this one. There we go. So now you can see that shot. That's the shot I'm going to do. I'm going to use the tripod because I want to make sure that it's a, a fair test. You know, I don't want to change things between shots. But I'm going to do one shot like that. And then we're going to do another one with the lens longer. So I'm just going to use the same shot, the same tripod and just kind of zoom that shot and make it something like that. That's all out of focus at the moment. I can't change it while I'm filming. But you get the idea. 18 mil, let's recompose my shot. Focus, which is of course very important. There we go. I'm using F10. I'm going to use that on both lenses. So it's a nice middle aperture. We should be in the right place. I'm using auto everything. I'm just shooting JPEGs with aperture priority, but I'm letting the camera do the exposure. I don't want to interfere with anything and this kind of lighting, it should be fine. So focus, there we go. There's our 18. Let's just zoom that to 35. Take that shot. I'm not going to change the aperture. I'm just going to focus on the gray, blue, darker blue of the two huts. So let's get that lined up. There we go. 
shoot that shot. Right, lens change time. There's the expensive one. Here we go. So let's set that to 55 while we got this composition all, all set and ready to go. Let's just focus in the same place. That's on F9, we don't want F9, we want F10. Happy days, shoot that one. Now, this one's a 16 mil, so I'm gonna have to come back out to about 18. I've got to guess this because it's written on the barrel on the top. I can only guess it. Uh, it doesn't display in the viewfinder. I think, I'm pretty sure, that is our shot. 16, sneak it in a little bit. That should be good. There we go, okay. Let's go find some more. So, we've got a nice shot of some angular looking beach huts. Where are you, Tilly Lou? Here you are. Um, we've got some nice angular looking beach huts in the sunshine. Now let's go for something a little bit softer and compare the two lenses with that. You may remember Tilly Lou James, designer of the butterfly yoga seat. We did that shoot down on the beach and she has kindly volunteered to be my lovely model. So let's have a look. Now I was hoping we'd have some little bits of sunlight, but I don't know what the light's gonna do. Tilly Lou, just here somewhere, please. And I'm gonna shoot a shot looking down there with the kind of driveway and the light coming in round the corner. I think that will look really good. Yeah, we've got a bit of sparkly light on your face. First, let's do the composition. So 55 mil for this. I'm not gonna use 2.8 on this lens. I'm gonna make sure it's fair. We're gonna just use 5.6. So it's the same on both lenses. If I just focus up on Tilly Lou, make sure it's on 5.6. There we go. I'm just gonna roll a bit of video. Here we go. So you can see that's the composition. I might come a little closer, move to the side a bit. You see that light down the driveway? That's good. Look at the horrible light on Tilly's face. Tilly Lou, can you go back a little, please, into the shade? Keep going, keep going. Bit more, bit more, bit more. That's better, whoa. Did you see the light change on Tilly's face? That's much, much, much nicer. Cool, so that's our shot. Now let's just take it. I think the video's off. Of course the light's changed, but it doesn't matter. As long as we get them both in the same light. Looking wonderful. Ooh. <laughs> we got you rubbing your chin then. That was like a 19, 1970s. Right, we've got that shot. May I get you to hold the lens, please? I need to, lens change time. Lovely job, thank you. Right, lens is changed. Make sure we've got the identical settings on both. 55 mil, f5.6. Are we on f5.6? Yes, we are. Do you know what? This time I'm just gonna put the driveway over Tilly Lou's other shoulder, just so that we can differentiate. One more. Don't put your tongue out. Excellent. Marvellous. So that's another one we can go and compare. So thank you, Tilly Lou. Any chance you can make us a cup of tea before we go? Coffee. Cup of coffee. Oh, thank you. Oh, this is good, isn't it? Right. I found a lovely little detail shot. We're at Steve Lee's art studio here. There's these beautiful things. Come and have a look, Emma. Just look at these beautiful things. All these beautiful paintings that he does. And his lovely wife, Julie who's in the shop there. Give us a wave, Julie. <laughs> Has said, yeah, of course you can. I was walking down and I just saw these little details and I thought that will look absolutely awesome as a detail shot. And you can also kind of see through into the back of the shot. I'm just gonna roll a little bit of my video and then you can see what my shot is. So we've got these little details, so that'll be an interesting analogy just to see the difference between the two lenses. We've got a little bit of background detail, we've got a little bit of separation between here and there, so we're gonna use a wide aperture. Now, if you don't know why you would need a wide aperture, you do need to learn how to the, use the controls, what the controls of the cameras do. That's what my Ultimate Beginners course is all about. It will tell you all about this good stuff that we've been doing in this little video, so go and check it out if you're not quite sure. Right, I'm gonna focus here on the cup. My focal length, we're gonna use a mid-range one now because we've been using long and shorts. I'm at about 30 millimeters, I guess. I'm focused on the cup. I'm not interfering with anything. I'm leaving the camera to do all of it. And there we go, we've taken a shot. Now, lens change time. There we go. So we got the big bad boy on. Let's have a little look. Make sure my settings are all right. Take the lens cap off, it works better. 
Now then, let's just, it's quite, I'm just gonna take that picture because I just like the picture. I quite like the wide angle. I'm just being all creative and arty there. I just like that picture, but. Right, so where were we? We were at about 30, 30 millimeters, weren't we? So that is our focal length. My aperture was on 5.6, so I just need to change my aperture to make sure we're using the same things. That's looking good. We're in focus, same settings, take the picture. Cool, so that's our shots. Now all we need to do is go back to base and compare them. Right, images are now on the hard drives, let's take a look. So, pop into develop so I can see the information, we know what's what. Now this one here was taken on my little 18 to 55 millimeter, there it is. 250, maybe 300 pounds worth of lens. And this one here was taken on the uh, 16 to 55. You would probably pick this one up in the UK for, I don't know, 800 to 1,000 pounds maybe. I paid probably 1,500 pounds, big premium, because I was in Iceland. Everything in Iceland is very, very expensive. But what is the difference? Let's just drag this along here so they're next to each other. It's just a bit easier. Now, ignore that little bit of distortion movement going on around this area here because that's where I didn't get the focal length exactly right. Look, we've got 18 millimeters versus 17 and, and that's just me where I didn't have the camera lined up absolutely perfectly. But what I notice when I flick between the two straight away is there's a contrast difference. If we look at this one taken on the little 18 to 55, look into this area here, this shadow area, look into any of the shadow areas. When we flip to the more expensive 16 to 55, it's done Darker. But look at the exposures up here, look, 1 350th of a second at f10, 1 350th of a second at f10. It's exactly the same exposure. So there is a bit more contrast there, and that may be what's contributing to my feeling that they're a little bit over sharp. I'm not sure. Um, if you look at the other two closer in shots, I still think that the little 18 to 55 has just a slightly nicer look. It's not quite so noticeable when I flick between those two. If we can have a quick look in Photoshop, because Photoshop, we're really, we're, we're looking at the, the pure JPEG image as it came out of the camera. So this one is from the little 18 to 55, 250 quid lens. Where's file info? Just to prove my point. Here we go. Um, where is it? iOS lens, 18 to 55. Cool. When we flick to the slightly more contrast, you can, I think you can see the difference a little more in this one. Um, and I think when we go, so this is the 18 to 55, this is the 16 to 55, it's not quite so noticeable. And you may not see this on screen, but to me it's still an incy bit sharp. I mean, I am talking the most tiny, ridiculous little bits here. This is pixel peeping <laughs> for the worst kind, in my opinion, and I'm not a pixel peeper. And I'll come and say more about that in a moment. Let's just get in a bit closer. Let's just go into 100% on both of those images and just see how they stack up there. So again, you see, I'm just seeing that this one here on the 16 to 55, it just somehow has that little sharp edge to it. It's like those big flat screen HD TV 4K ready blah blah blah. Look at the detail on this type TVs, which I honestly hate. I think they look absolutely dreadful. I really, really don't like watching them. Reality doesn't look like that, and it's not just because I wear glasses either. I promise you. I, mm. But anyway, I'm having a rant. But what about the other images? And why am I discussing this? Well, I'm gonna come more to that in a minute. Let's go to uh, Lightroom here. Let's just have a little look at these portraits of Tilly Lou. So what do we got here? This was on the little, that's on the 16 to 55. This one's on the 18 to 50. Again, let's put them next to each other. It's just easier to look at. It's not as easy to see in Lightroom, I don't think. But again, I'm seeing that the WR, this one, the water resistant, it somehow has in the portrait to me a very, very faint whiff of, almost like it's had one of those portrait filters put over it. You know, one of those, those bits of software you get that smooth skin and all the rest of it. It just has a little whiff of that. Only the merest hint of a whiff of that, but very, very little. Otherwise I'd say there's not a great deal to choose between the two. Again, I would say that the WR, the 16 to 55,000 odd pound lens has got a bit more contrast to it. It's the shadow areas on Tilly Lou's face are just a little bit darker. When it comes to the shots we did outside the shop, I'm not even gonna to bother to look at those because I'm afraid, hands up, I copped up, 
I ballsed it up. If you look, you may notice that this shot here taken with the 18 to 55 is at f4 and the one I took with the WR was at 5.6. So I don't think that would be a fair comparison. We're not going to talk about it. So why am I talking about this? It's all down to you again, thinking about your photography rather than spending all your life worrying and thinking about kit and which kit to buy. You can see, look, 350, 300 pounds, 250, 350 pounds, nearly a thousand pounds. Is there much difference? Very, very little. What you need to weigh up in this case is the differences between the two lenses. Visually, almost nothing. So we have a 2.8 aperture here. Is that a good thing? In this case, as far as um, say getting a faster shutter speed and avoiding camera shake comes in, no, doesn't make any difference because this one doesn't have image stabilizing and this one does and it's very, very good. So I, should, I would say that the two cancel each other out here. Also, this is 2.8 at the wide end and then it changes to 5.6 as you zoom it. So what about the 2.8 again? Well, on this lens here, the thousand pound lens, you've got 2.8 throughout the range. Therefore, you can have a shallower depth of field. That's something creative, which you may like, and it may be of use to you. Um, you just have to weigh up the cost. Is it worth that much money? The other thing, of course, is this one is water resistant and this one isn't. So if you're into landscapes, you like going out and shooting in the rain, then I would say the water resistancy probably is a bonus and it may be worth the money. But again, it's just something for you to weigh up. This isn't about sitting around pondering over which kit you should buy, what lens will give me better photos, because you can see the photos don't really look any different at all, do they? Between those lenses. Personally, I would rather keep my little cheapy lens here um, because it's smaller. It does everything I want it to do. I can fit it in my pocket with the body on it. I don't have to carry a camera bag with me. That's great if I just want to whip the camera out and shoot something. I'd rather have the money. So I'm afraid I'm going to be saying goodbye to that little baby there. You may think I'm bonkers, but that's the way it is. You just need to think about your kit. Do you really, really need it? Or would you be better off spending a few quid investing it in yourself, learning how light works, composition, when's the decisive moment? When do you want to press the shutter? How are you going to get mood and feeling and empathy into your images? Do you want foreground or not want foreground? Do you want to start flat composition? Do you want depth in your composition? None of those things are affected by kit. They're affected by you. And I think they are way more important. So I hope that little comparison has been in value and it is a comparison of opinion. This isn't a comparison of reality. I'm not saying one lens is better than the other. I am not saying that's a better lens. Could I live with this? Absolutely I could. It is a stonkingly brilliant lens. All I'm saying is the difference is so small between them, I'd rather have the money. So there we go. I hope this has been some value to you. I look forward to seeing you next time. And I also welcome your comments. I'd love to know what you think about what I've just said. So please leave some comments below. If you like the video, click in a few likes. Please share it with other photographers because it helps me make more free videos. These are quite time consuming to make. So the more you share them, the more likely I am to be able to make this type of video, which is awesome. You can also sign up to my newsletter if you wish. Um, I'll notify you whenever there is a new video. You can do that on my website at photographycourses.biz. It's up on screen and there's a link thing up there at the moment. So stay well, take care and I'll see you soon.